carbon dioxide, those of us who are old enough to remember uh, learning about this in, in, in our younger years, this is the stuff that we put out after we take in the that's oxygen. Right, that's uh, right. You know, our breath when we exhale is about 40,000 parts per million carbon dioxide, 4%. You probably remember from high school chemistry, you can blow through a straw into lime water and you get this cloud of white, you know, carbonate particles forming. So it's a perfectly natural thing. And in fact, we're in a bit of a carbon dioxide famine now. If you look over geological history, it's been much higher than now. Most of the time, most plants do better with more carbon dioxide than they have now. So there, it's just... It, a complete distortion of the truth to call it a pollutant. It's not a pollutant at all. When did this start becoming a pollutant and not just the naturally occurring material that we all heard about growing up? Well, I think in, it began to uh, get legs in the 70s and 80s. There was a uh, Academy of Sciences report by Charney in the 70s, and uh, then it got latched on by green politicians. Al Gore is a person who comes to mind, but there are many others. And uh, so people saw uh, a way to make a buck in uh, demonizing CO2, and that's what's happened. Uh, so your presentation goes into the science. What are some of the things that people should know that would help them realize that this myth of carbon pollution is, in fact, a myth? Well, one obvious thing is that um, greenhouse operators, you know, who grow, you know, tomatoes, flowers, uh, intentionally uh, increase the CO2 concentration in the greenhouse by factors two, three, four. And uh, you have to pay to do that, you know, you have to pay for the CO2. But it's still worth doing it because the plants grow so much better with more CO2. 